To illustrate scheduling, I've drawn three walls here with similar windows in the back and then different sizes all up the front. If I go to F3, we can see those three walls and we can see that the windows are all different. At the easiest, the simplest way to generate schedules is go to Document, Schedules and List, Element Lists, Window Schedule Type 1 gives us this type of schedule straight out of the box where it draws the window and gives you the sizes and the second type of schedule is type 2 this format's slightly different once again it's straight out of the box the only thing you may like to do on these schedules is change these text fields these four text fields are called into both of these schedules that I've shown and they can very simply be changed by going to your root directory, going to Graphsoft, Archicad 10, List Templates, Custom Text. Inside the Custom Text folder, there we have the text 1, 2, 3 and 4 that you see. You just change that text to anything you like. So, Virtual Tutor 10 and push save yes we want to save that then we just need to reload our libraries and once the libraries are reloaded you go to document with schedules and generate the schedule again there we can see the text fields have been updated if these types of schedules are adequate for what you do then your job's pretty easy but if we want to create our own schedules we have to go to document schedules and list schedule element schedule schemes over here i create a new schedule and i'm just going to call this vt schedule push ok then once i've got it in the schemes part of this dialog box i can list the criteria at the moment it wants to report on walls we don't want walls we want windows so I click on the window. Next we need to choose the fields that we want to report on. If I click on window and door there, if we want the 2D symbol, I just left mouse click on it, drag it to the right hand side. If I want to display which room it's coming from, the room number, I certainly want the height of the window. In actual fact, the width and height is probably more appropriate, so I'm just going to grab that and push remove then if I don't want anything from I'm going to make this fairly simple so I'm not going to choose anything else there from the general tab I'm going to choose the story that the window is on and perhaps even the library part name so if I want to sort this differently I'll take the floor story up to the top and I want this ascending rather than descending then next we'll have the 2D symbol, window size, and then the library part name. In actual fact, I'll put the library part name underneath the story. Now if I push OK, now if I click on Element Schedules, there's my VT schedule. And if I double click that and open it up, there it's created my schedule. We have lots of formatting commands that we can use to format our schedule. If I want to hide all the formatting tools, I can just click on that icon there and it all disappears. If I want it to reappear, I'll just click there again. We've got plenty of formatting tools here that start with the schedule options. Over here we can show our records by rows, which gives me a narrow and tall view of our schedule. Or I can go by columns, which will typically give me a wide view of our schedule. For the moment, I'm going to leave it on rows. The first checkbox is show uniform items as a single entry. So any of these windows that are exactly the same will be shown as a single entry. And if I uncheck that, we can see these five windows are separated there. Then if I click first parameter as a headline, over there we've got the floor story that's giving us a headline. And I can also insert a separator row after it. And the header name can be the same as the prefix. 
so that's grouped that over there so it's pretty easy to move things around in there so it looks quite presentable under format options we can choose the font for each of these sections or whatever section is mentioned here so for the header we can choose Arial we might want to choose Futura Light Western we can change the font size pen color if I want to make that slightly different color we can then I can go down to the entire schedule once again I can choose another font and choose the pen color once again we can also drag the width of each column the header options we can also hide the main header and hide column headers if we want just going to show those again we also have a footer section here if I can drag this up I can't drag this up anymore we can see footer settings right there here we can add fields like the date time and page number to the foot of each page to get a running total of how many windows there are there if I click on scheme settings click on the library part name I need to click here till I get the Sigma 1 symbol then if you want the subtotal to display from each floor we click in this dialog box here and the little flag comes up even though I only have windows on one floor in this particular example I also want to add up how many windows there are on story zero and if I push OK now we can see the results of those calculations here we can see that there's one here we can see there's one double hung window five of these double sashes and so they're all added up and there's the total number of windows down the bottom there so as we can see all the totals are underneath each window and the grand total is down here at the bottom so we might even change the color of that to another color and make it bold if I've got a really long schedule I can also click to freeze the header and then I can scroll the rest of the schedule up and down while still maintaining the view of the header this is something very similar to Excel if I wanted to edit the scheme even at this point in time I can click on scheme settings and change some criteria for example if I wanted to put the width there as well I can just push OK and the schedule will recalculate itself here's the width now with the width parameter being in a column of its own I can now grab this window and change this to two and a half meters for example and if I go back to story zero and find that window we can see that now it's two and a half meters but if I grab that window again and change that so it's smaller I'll make it very small so it's really obvious then if I open my schedule once again we can see that it's updated back to 713 millimeters so there's two-way interactivity between the schedule and the floor plan so the next thing we're going to do is place this schedule on a layout so I'm just going to close this I'm going to go to the project chooser and show the organizer with the organizer open make sure that we have the project map on the left hand side and on the right hand side make sure that we've got a layout book if I just grab my schedule and drag that to in between the layout where there's a black line it will create its own page with the schedule on it if I double click on that we'll see it in the floor plan space there it is there however if I've just got another layout that's visible I can also just grab that schedule and drag it onto that floor plan that way it keeps the naming of the page that it's going to but if I wanted to create a page with its own schedule name I drag it in between now if I zoom into that and let's just say I had a smaller sheet of paper and I needed to resize it I can select the schedule and click on restructure table 
and that will change the physical properties of the schedule so it will conveniently fit into a page regardless of the space that you have. This makes the live schedule very flexible because we can fit it into tight areas on pages. Taking into consideration all the different items that we can actually schedule using the scheduling tool. So after setting up a couple of your own schedules and customizing them so they suit your practice, it's quite easy to see how that it would cut down your workload considerably.